Hi, my name's Danielle, I'm 12 and I'm from Auckland. And tell us what's happening with your hearing. Well, 20 months ago, I started getting lesions in my ears and because I've worn hearing aids all my life, these affected me wearing my ear moulds and for the last four months, I think, almost five, I haven't been able to wear my right hearing aid, so. What were the lesions like? Painful, incredibly painful. They're like little blisters in my ears, just under the ear molds. And mm. yeah, it's so, so painful. I just, yeah. And so you said you couldn't wear your hearing aid. So how did that impact on your life? Oh, it's been incredibly hard at school. I, I barely even go anymore. I can't hear my teachers. I can't hear my friends. Lessons are just so hard because I'm not getting anything from them. I can't hear anything, and it's just background noise for me. Can you, could you still do all of your subjects? No. For, ever since we did music and languages, I've never done them. I've always done study and, you know, catching up with all my other classes, because I can't hear any notes in music, any tunes. I can't really tell the difference between the high sounds and the low sounds, and languages, I can't hear any the pronunciation, can't hear any of that, so I think it's just it's not worth it. So do you think the teachers really appreciate what you've gone through? No, end? no, they don't. They do try to help as much as they can, but I don't think anyone who isn't deaf will ever understand what it's like to be deaf. What about at home where everybody knows that you're deaf? What adaptations have you had to make in the last 20 months? Well, we haven't... My, I haven't been able to watch TV properly anymore because so many, so many shows don't have subtitles. And I just have to keep stopping and asking what it is. And we, my parents and my brother try to help me but it's just so hard because I can never really join in on family conversations as much as they try. And they're signing to me and everything, but there's just so much stuff that I still miss. Mm. And my parents can't call me anymore. We have this doorbell kind of thing set up in my room with this flashing light and everything, but mm. it's just going to be a really lonely, isolated world. And yeah. it's just, I hate it really. Sounds like you've been going into your shell more and more. I definitely have. Mm, I, yeah. And, and in the car as well, I guess that's hard. It's really hard because on the way to school and on the way home, my parents and my brother are talking and I, I'm trying to join in. I can't really hear anything they're saying and it just gets so hard repeating it. Again, it's just so lonely. And it's just going to the mall and hanging out with people. I barely ever do it anymore because it's just too hard to try and listen. Do you think they understand? No. So, so what do you do now that you can't hear? I mainly just... I mainly just read and write poems, really. <laughs> yeah. And um, what about your journey from when the audiologist said maybe you'd be a candidate for an implant to now? What's that been like? It's been a long journey. Um, it, there's been lots and lots of hearing tests, lots of back and forth trips to the hearing house. Yeah, it's been so long. What sort of tests have you had to have done? Well, I think everyone who's deaf knows the beep test. Right. And there's been speech perception tests. What are they like? They're where you sit on a chair um, and a guy speaks through the speakers and you try to repeat what word he said. And it's just one word and there's no context, so it's so hard. Wow, thinking game. Yeah, and he's so boring and monotonous. <laughs> so that's, the, that's audiology. Did you have any medical tests? Yeah, I had to have a pneumococcal vaccine. Um, you have to have a checkup with your surgeon mm -hmm. and you have to have an MRI scan. What's that for? That's just for making sure your inner ear is all normal and they can operate on it. Mm. 
What about um, where you are now? So you've had a few tests done and what's, what's happened next? Next is my surgery, which is in two weeks and six days. Not that I'm counting. No. But <laughs> <laughs> and what, what concerns have you got about that day? Um, well, naturally, as anyone would be, I'm worried about having my head cut open. <laughs> um, I'm just, I just have to put the worries at the back of my mind mm -hmm. and think about the future and how much better my life is going to be after the future. Do you know this, sorry to interrupt, do you know anything <laughs> about the, the operation? Have you been told what it's going to be like? I can't say I know much, but from what I've heard, it's, it's a three hour operation and Basically, you have a huge bandage over your ear, which should be fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, yeah, you basically just go in your pajamas and you can't wear a onesie. Oh, so oh, sad. That, that is sad. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. very sad. I wonder why you can't wear a onesie. Yeah, it would be nice, you know. Because they're pretty trendy right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What did you tell me before that you're going to do with your neck? Oh yeah, um, I'm just going to write some stuff on my neck, like fragile, please be careful. And I'm thinking of doing the dotted line, you know, the cut hair line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just so they know what to do. Hopefully your surgeon has a sense of humour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, can anyone come with you to the hospital? Mum can, mm -hmm. and Dad can wake, and Mum can sleep with me overnight. Good. Yeah, and that's Good. going to be very comforting. Yeah, and it's just one night. Yeah, it's just one night. <laughs> <laughs> and what about after the operation? What are you? What are your hopes and dreams or expectations? I don't have incredibly high expectations for the first book after the operation and after I've been tuned in because I'm supposed to only be hearing beeps and whistles or gong or duck underwater. <laughs> stuff like that but once I actually understand everything and once I know what's been what's happening and once I can hear properly I just really hope that I can join in on everything that I've missed out lately like mm -hmm. mm, and I can go swimming yeah. I can go swimming with this implant and for almost nine years now we've been a boating family mm -hmm. so every summer I've been left out of all the fun and the swimming yes you can swim, but you can't hear. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Wow. And you um, are you getting two or one? What's the decision there? Um. Uh. Well, it started off with me getting one for my right ear, and then after all this testing, it showed that I might need um, I might need I might need one for my left, and then we've gone back down to one for my right, and that's the one surgery and. If nothing works for the lesions in my left ear, then I will get an implant from my left. Very so, good. who knows? Wait and see. Yep. Yeah. So, is there anything else you wanted to, to let people know at this point in time before you go into surgery? Is there anything else that you've been through that you think will help other people going through this? Um... You're not the only one, basically. Mm. Um, and there's ways of getting your anger out and ways of letting the sadness out. And my way is writing. Mm. I write poems about how I feel. And there's got to be a way that you can let it all out. Right. Don't bottle it up. Yeah. Just don't bottle it up. Just tell people how you feel. Yeah. And it'll make people more aware of what you're going through. Yeah. And keep positive. Yeah, and stay positive. Yeah, very yeah. good. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Danielle. That's excellent. Well done. <laughs>